Hello, in this video we're going to look at the returns to scale when we're dealing with a production function with three inputs. Example one, here's our production function. It's a function of labor, capital, and materials. And we're going to let L, K, and M equal two. We don't have to let all the inputs equal the same value, but for simplicity we'll do that. Plugging in our values for L, K, and M into the production function, and now simplifying get the following. 3 squared is 9 and 2 raised to the 1 half power squared is just 2 and this will equal 18. And now we want to see what happens if we were to double all our inputs. So let's let K, L, and M now equal 4, doubling of their previous values. Plugging 4 now into the production function. So the square root of 4 is just 2, and we got 3 of those, and so 6 squared is 36. And you can see here that we have constant returns to scale. All the inputs were doubled and output exactly doubled. So that is an indication of constant returns to scale. Example 2. Slightly different production function. We'll start off the same way. We'll let L, K, and M equal 2. Plug those values into the production function and now simplify. So 3 raised to the power of 3 is going to be 27 and 2 to the 1 half power raised to the power of 3 is 2 raised to the 3 halves power and this will simplify down to 76.4. Once again we'll double all the inputs and now plug 4 into the production function for each input and simplifying we get a value of 216 so this is a more than doubling of output so we doubled our inputs and output more than doubled here we have increasing returns to scale all inputs doubled and output more than doubled moving on to example three example three we have this Cobb Douglas production function and we'll let L K and M equal two plugging those values into the production function and simplifying we got 2 raised to the 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third power, or just 2. So output is 2. If we were to double all the inputs, we're going to get an answer here of 4. So here we have constant returns to scale. All inputs doubled and output exactly doubled. Example 4, we're going to see this has decreasing returns to scale. Evaluating the production function at L, K, and M equals 2. We're going to get 2 raised to the 3 fourths power, which is 1.682. Let's now, instead of doubling all our inputs, let's just increase all our inputs by 10%. So in that case, L, K, and M will equal 2 times 1.1 or 2.2. This is a 10% increase in our inputs. Plugging that, those values into our production function and simplifying, output is 1.81. The percentage increase in output going from 1.682 to 1.81, given by this percentage change formula, is only 7.61%. So we increased all our inputs by 10%, and output went up by less than 10%. That'll be an indication of decreasing returns to scale. So once again, all inputs increased by 10%, but output increased by less than 10%, so we have decreasing returns to scale. If output increased exactly by 10% from this 10% increase in all inputs, we would have constant returns to scale. And if we increase our inputs by 10% and output increased by more than 10%, that would be increasing returns to scale. Moving on to example five. Here we have a slightly different production function linear in the inputs. And let's let L equal 1, K equal 4, and M equals 3. I just want to show you we don't have to set all inputs equal to the same value in order to determine returns of scale. So plugging those values into our production function, we get 15 units of output. Now let's double all our inputs. So L equals 2, K goes from 4 to 8, and M goes from 3 to 6. Plugging those values into the production function, we have an output of 30, so this is constant returns to scale. We doubled all our inputs, and output exactly doubled. 
Okay, I'll stop here.